welcome to the Awakening Podcast Network. Get ready for an inspiring audio from this cutting-edge voice. You can find more podcasts at awakeningpodcasts.com. You want to go deeper? Get equipped to overcome and walk in God's purpose for your life at Awakening House of Prayer's online campus. You'll experience an online family, preaching, teaching, and prophetic impartation for victorious living. We have over a thousand members online hungry for what God is saying and doing in the earth. Visit ahop.online today and join our family. AHOP TV empowers believers with spirit-inspired messages and strategic equipping that accelerates your spiritual growth. You can subscribe to stream weekly content from Awakening House of Prayer, conferences, and other exclusive content to stir your hunger and encourage your heart. Visit us online at ahop.tv. So let's get on to our second in the series on The Discerner. The theme verse for today comes from John chapter 16 in verse 13. You can say, well, what is the theme, buddy? The theme today is enhancing your spiritual senses, that your spiritual senses can be enlightened. They can be awakened. They can be enhanced or graduate from level to level, enhancing your spiritual senses. So a theme verse I'm using today comes from John chapter 16, verse 13, where it reads, But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own initiative, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will disclose to you What is to come? Don't you want to be numbered amongst those who are friends with God? Who do you share your secrets with? A trusted friend. You don't share your secrets with everybody. And sometimes you just need your heart to be heard. Do you know that sometimes that's the way it is with God? You might think this is advanced prophetic right now, but listen to this little thought. Sometimes God shares with us when our senses are spiritually enhanced, and He shares knowledge with us. And we often pre assume that everything we hear were to tell. Uh uh. When you share your secret with your friend, you're sharing that with them, knowing, or at least hoping, knowing they're not going to share your secret. And because if they did, you're not going to share. Oh, do you think that there might be some natural spiritual parallels here? So one, if you want to really grow in sensitivity and your spiritual senses growing in awareness, alertness, maturity, you will learn when to speak a thing. You will learn when to pray a thing. You will learn when to shout a thing from the rooftops. You will learn when to teach a thing, to counsel a thing, or to give it out a little bit Wait for the response, not overwhelming them that you are a know-it-all. Oh, that deals with an attitude. Because some of us who move in spiritual gifts, some of us that are so extra sensitive, we can come across that we are better than other people. And guess what? We're not. We simply have different gifts, different callings, and we are growing in different times and spheres of maturity. Solid food is for the mature. Remember Hebrews 5.14? Solid food is for the mature who, because of practice, have their senses trained to discern good and evil. Then I'm partnering that verse with John 16, 13. But when he, the spirit of truth comes, which he has already come in the new covenant, 
new creation of being born again in Jesus. It says he will guide you into not some of the truth, all the truth. Some people get led to a certain place. They stop and their light does not grow because they haven't become what they've just heard or they're not acting on what they've heard. And then they wonder why, oh, I'm not hearing God again anymore. Well, obey the last things you received, and I guarantee you, you will. But the thing that I wanted to really get to here is, it says, but whatever he hears. So guess what? I have done a survey around the world. And the question I have often asked, literally around the world, is, what's the ministry of the Holy Spirit? And people give me great answers. I actually have them hold up their hand and, and you know, give me their name and what city they're from and, 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 and what did, what's the ministry. And they'll say, he gives us gifts. Right. He bears fruit. Absolutely. He brings conviction. Keep going. He, and, 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 and just, and, and he, he delivers us. He empowers us. And all those answers are always correct. But every time I've asked this question all over the world, there is one answer I have never received. And it's in this verse in John 16, 13. It says, he guides us into truth. People will say he guides. They'll say that he speaks. But here's the part people not one time have ever said to me. And it's one of the primary ministries of the Holy Spirit. He listens. He listens. Are you a listener? In order to hear, you have to listen. I also have some background in communications training. And just basically, you know, there is a big difference between being talked at and talked with. Huh. Because if you're sharing, you're talking with. On the other side, you know the person is listening. And what kicks a person into gear of talking at someone is that they somehow intuitively know that that person's not listening. So you put a little more yourself into it because you're trying to get their attention and end up talking at someone. Well, that can also be on both ends, ends there on issues, right? Hindrances. And so, uh, but you say, what does God do with being a discerner? A lot. Because listen, I said, but listen, okay. He does not speak on his own initiative. So people will say to me, he convicts, he empowers, he guides, he's a counselor, he's a comforter. He he, he gives us gifts, he brings fruit, and he speaks. But it says this, it's one of the primary ministries of the Holy Spirit. But whatever he hears. Did you know that hearing God, I think, in some ways is a whole lot easier than what we make it out to be? Sometimes we're sort of like like our sweating, you know, enhancing our spiritual senses. So let's work with hearing for a moment. And it's like, oh, my gosh, I just got to hear God. And we're gritting our teeth and we're trying to press in because it's the right thing to do. But you're like trying to squeeze blood out of a turnip. <laughs> a radish, Okay. Do you get it? it is, oh my gosh! I just went. I just went south on us. Did you get it? <laughs> oh my goodness! I don't know what's going on today, but I got it. Hope you're getting it. You can be a discerner, and you can grow in your spiritual senses being enhanced. And one of the primary ways you can do it is by listening. You know, when you give people the time of day and you stop your agenda and you listen to theirs, you know what you're doing? Giving value. Whether what they're saying is right or not is not the issue. You're giving them value. And I've had the Lord deal with me a lot on this because I've always been a fixer. I got to fix it. Sometimes I don't need to fix nothing, okay? Sometimes I just need to be present and dial down, be present. And guess what? Sometimes what God wants is not somebody always rambling with questions, but someone who'll be 
and he'll listen. So if you want to grow, like in hearing, enhancing your spiritual senses, then guess what? You might want to try. Shut your mouth. (laughs) You might want to zip your lips. I mean, you might want to, huh, be quick. Let's do Bible language. Book of James. Quick to listen and slow to speak. Oh, that's a great key to walking in a higher level of enhancing in your spiritual senses. And so, some personal experiences. Wow. So, for over a stretch of 10 years, you know, I used to pray different scriptures. I obviously still pray the Word of God. I pray a verse for my family and friends every week. I pray another verse, typically, for my ministry partners and my my mentoring group as well, like every week. And so, praying the Word of God for me is being naturally supernatural. And if you're looking for keys... To increase in your spiritual senses, graft the Word of God into your soul, which is able to save your soul. What does that mean? Read the Word, chew the Word, pray the Word. If you'll pray the Bible, you will create a culture of the soil of your heart that when the Word is sent your heart will not repel that seed of the word. It will welcome the seed of the word. So I've prayed, you know, scripture daily for years. And so I pray a lot of the Pauline epistles, like prayers from Colossians and prayer from Ephesians. And and, and I would lay my hand on my own heart. I've done this for years. So let me give you two examples of praying the word on how to enhance your spiritual senses. From Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18 and 19, I pray that the eyes of your heart will be enlightened so that you might know, get the sense, know, the hope of his calling. So put your hand over your heart because you've got more than one set of eyes. And so now we're going to work on enhancing the spiritual sense of sight of seeing. So we pray over our heart, like Paul the Apostle prayed over the heart of the church of Ephesus. And we pray over your heart that it'll be enlightened, that it will shine bright, that you might know the hope of his calling. And then, how about then you want to be a listener, as I gave us the opening verse in John 16, 13. You want to be a listener. So how about if you're able to do it? Don't do it driving in the car. Don't raise up both hands, okay? But just put a hand or hands over your ears and just say, Father, I give you my ears, my hearing, and I posture myself to not be busy, busy, busy all the time, but I posture myself to pause, to listen. To hear as the Holy Spirit does. Because we aren't just to speak our own speech. Holy Spirit speaks, but not on his own initiative. He speaks whatever he hears the Father saying. Yeah, I love it. Don't you? So that's eyes and ears. But I got a little story that just popped in me that I just got to go off on it because it's fun and I have the microphone and I can do this, okay? So this is about enhancing your spiritual senses. It was my oldest daughter's birthday and she wanted chocolate cheesecake. I was doing physical therapy at the time at a place in Cool Springs in the Franklin area at Star D1 Therapy. And it's a professional athletic place that I did not belong at. Okay, And so I was, though, doing a therapy from after a back surgery. And I'm leaving and I'm going like, huh, I need to get some chocolate cheesecake. I wonder where I go. So I'm talking to my friend, Jeffrey, who's been on staff with me in one way or another for 15 years. I'm talking to him on the phone, and I go, huh, I wonder where I could get some chocolate cheesecake. And he says, oh, why don't you go down, and I'm going to go name of the store. He says, you go down there. And But in my brain, a name of a grocery store ran across my thoughts as though that's where to go. But it made no sense. 
And then so I said, oh, well, this is what came to me. I said, nah. And I said, so I said, so I said to my friend, I said, Jeffrey, where should I go to? And he tells me the name of this other store. But a name floats of a grocery store across my mind that didn't make sense. And I'm like, hear it three times. Yeah, I, I saw it. I heard it. I saw it. It was there. I knew it. I heard. I saw. I feel so Southern. That I saw it. And I heard it. And I could read it. Anyway, I think you get, I think you get it. And so, okay, I don't know what's going on today, but maybe somebody up there just needs to get healed from something that is actually bothers them from some certain cultural ways. Okay, so finger of God, just touch us each. But so here's the story. So I decided to go with my knower. And I go over to this store. I park in the parking lot. I get out. I start to walk in the, you know, the opener, automatic doors. I come in and there's this young mother there and she pokes her head up. She looks at me and she goes, are you James Gall? And I go, sometimes. <laughs> Clark Kent, Superman, you know. And I said, you know, I go, well, uh, why? She says, Last night, says, I'm Church of Christ, and I'm from a, one of those cessationist churches that, that says, like, the gifts of the Spirit are of the devil. She says, and last night, I was so hungry for God that I started going onto YouTube, and I'm going all over the place, and I, and I ran across this uh, video, and this young mother with two little kids, she was talking real fast, and I was like, okay, okay, I'm just trying to keep up. And she says, and and, and at midnight, I, I, I saw this crazy man named James Gall, and he's on, and he's on this television show with Patricia King and it was but it was on YouTube and and and, and it's like and he started talking about sp- uh, growing in your spiritual senses and he started talking about uh, supernatural speaking in tongues and and praying and worshiping and I don't know what that stuff is but I was told that that's of the devil and she says but I got so hungry I just said god give me what that crazy man has got and she got it and she instantly started blurting out praying and worshiping God for three to four straight hours. She could not go to sleep. That next morning, she, when she woke up, she goes, God, if this was of you, let me meet that crazy man today. Well, I ain't crazy, except in this broadcast. <laughs> hey, by the way, watch it. You're driving the car and swerve the right way, okay? <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Okay, So she literally prayed. She said, God, if this is of you, she didn't know where this man, James Gall, even lived. I could have lived in New York, as for all she knew. And she, li- she didn't know I lived in Franklin, Tennessee. And she prayed. She said, Lord, if this is of you, getting empowered, baptized in the Holy Spirit with the gifts of the Spirit and speaking in tongues. And she says, if this is of you, then let me meet that crazy man today. Well, I walked through and there I was because I was going to go get chocolate cheesecake. But my knower was enhanced. My seer saw and I my ears heard and I obeyed what I received. And there was a great reward because she got affirmation She got courage and faith, and I was directed by her where there was chocolate cheesecake. (laughs) So, this is naturally supernatural, and you can grow in your by hearing, by seeing, by knowing, and in all of your senses, and by leaning in and learning to listen. Well, there's a question that's come in from Angela, and it says, what are some practical things you can do to enhance your spiritual senses? I actually think I already humorously at times and in teaching style already touched in on some of this. Don't just read the word, chew the word. Remember what I said? Pray the word. So like the theme verse today of John 16, 13, pray that you will have your spiritual senses enhanced by praying the Word of God. Want sight? Pray scriptures about the eyes of your heart. Pray scriptures like out of 2 Kings chapter 6, O Lord, open the eyes of your servant, they might see. Pray over your heart. 
pray over your hearing that whosoever uh, will hear the word of the Lord today, if they do not harden their heart. Oh, heart and hearing go together. So what are some practical things? One will be obeying the little nudges. Will you make some mistakes? Yes, but you will also grow. Pray the word and worship, 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 worship. I get my most revelatory activity when I am in the place of worship. Because when you're with him, you get all that God is. And your spiritual senses will be enhanced. Well, another question has come, and it's a really good one. Another one, how do I practice this when quiet time is not as quiet as it used to be because I have something called mom life. Well, I remember not as a mom, but I know those days. I remember my late wife, Michael Ann, after we had our fourth child and the three youngest was like, you know, a year and a half, year and a half type thing, basically between them. So it was stacked. And life was busy. I would be traveling. And I remember coming home, and I would want to tell my stories. And often Michael Ann wanted to hear them. Later, she had her own stories for sure. And I remember one night, she mom life. This is a mom life story. She leaned up against the wall, and she said, Lord, I'm so tired. I don't have time for you, and I don't have time for myself. Now, this was a woman who her Bible was her best friend, and she never missed a day in her life of reading something. Maybe it was only one verse, but reading the Bible. But she went into this season just like finding snatches. Oh, that's hard. So, God, I want you to know this. God will meet you even in your weakness. And she leaned up against the wall, and then God spoke to her and says, And he said, I know. He knew that she didn't have the time. He knew that she wanted to have that time, and she missed it. Her heart ached like yours does. And he gave her a promise, and he said, I'll visit you when you have time. I'll visit you in the night season. And did he ever. He met with her in dreams. He talked with her in visions. And so, dear one, I want you to know this. God understands the season you are in. And the sacrifice you can give in this season is just as much and will go just as far as the what will appear as the bigger sacrifice you gave in a previous season. Now, get some earbuds. Do some work. Always, always, I'm going to throw that. I'm going to throw my my funky talk in today. Get your worship on, okay? So get your worship on. That's how you're going to enhance your spiritual senses. And mom, if it works okay with the hubby, then it's like, have worship music going on at night. That is one of the best tools of enhancing your spiritual hit senses so hey this is james gall this has been a production of the awakening podcast network jennifer leclerc is the founder and owner of apn our heart is to inspire people and exalt jesus with every broadcast we're grateful for our advertisers and supporters that make these podcasts possible